Welcome to AP Chemistry at Hananiga High School. Today we'll be looking at part three of our notes over chapter 19, dealing with section 19.4, entropy changes in chemical reactions. Now if you look, these are a list of molar enthalpies of various substances in their standard states. Now the term standard state really deals with this little circle you see uh, in the S in the entropy column here. That little circle standard state means if you have a gas, it's at 1 atm pressure. If you have a aqueous solution, it would be 1 molar. And uh, our temperature here is going to be 298K. So these are our standard state conditions, basically. Now, you'll notice that for our solids, if we go back yesterday to something we were talking about right at the end of the notes in our last section of notes, the entropies, uh, this is the third law of thermodynamics, the entropy of any solid substance in its crystalline form at 0 Kelvin would be 298K. So, or, or, I'm sorry, would be 0 for an entropy value. So obviously if you're above zero Kelvin, you should have a positive value for your entropy. And that's what you see for all these substances here. But if you do notice, you will see a trend that appears. The standard entropies tend to increase with increasing molar mass. So as just a general rule, larger, more complex molecules are going to have greater entropies. And this is really about two different potential situations here. One, the standard entropies would increase when, one, the substance is a more complex molecule. So as you go from simpler to more complex, the entropy should increase as you get more ranges of motion. And then when you go from a smaller molecule to a larger molecule, you should also see the standard entropies increase. And you can see that here in these bottom values where the entropy is going from 186.3 for methane to 229.6 to 270.3. So as our length of our alkane hydrocarbon is increasing, we're getting higher entropy values. Now, entropy changes for a reaction can be estimated in a similar manner to what we did with delta H's. If you remember, we can use delta H's of formations. You'd take the sum of the enthalpy changes of the products minus the sum of the enthalpy changes of the reactants to determine what the enthalpy was. So we can do the same thing with standard entropies. Now, N and M here, just like it was for delta H, these would represent the number of moles because the values are molar enthalpies, so we'd have to multiply by the number of L. Uh, number of moles to get our actual uh, entropies. So if you take a look at Appendix C, you'll see that they not only list delta H of formations, which we used before, but this thing called delta G of formation and S. In this particular case, what we're going to be looking at is S. So when you go to your Appendix C, you're going to be looking in this third column here. So here's what a typical problem would look like. Calculate the entropy change for the following reaction given the values in Appendix C. So here's our reaction. N2O4 gas becomes 2NO2 gas. Now before we do the calculation, just pause and think a second. We've looked a little bit about different situations and what would be happening with their entropy. When you're going from one mole of a gas to two moles of a gas, what do you think that would do to your entropy? Will it be increasing or decreasing? So it would give you a positive delta S or a negative delta S. Think about that before you do the problem, and in the end, we'll come back to that idea. Now, in order to do this calculation, we're going to be using this formula. So we need to find from Appendix C, so I pulled up parts of Appendix C here, and what we're really looking at here are those two, NO2 and N2O4. So we need to look at those values in the above equation. Now, there's one mole of N2O4, and from the table, N2O4 is 304.3, so it'd be 1 times 304.3, and we have two moles of NO, so it'd be 2 times our 240.45, so that would be our value for the total of our reactants and the total of our products. And remember, it's the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants, so we'd have to take products minus reactants here, and we end up with a delta S of positive 176.6 joule kelvins. Now notice the moles disappeared when we multiplied by the mole amounts in each case. So you're going to end up getting joule kelvins for entropy. That's something we established earlier in the chapter. Units of entropy should be joule kelvins. Now in this particular case, final answer ended up positive, which would make sense. Remember I asked you about this at the very beginning. If you increase the number of moles of gas, that should increase the amount of entropy in the system. So that did work out with what the prediction should have been there. And that ends our third set of notes over chapter 19.